And welcome back everybody, this is Jump Shot John. I'm doing another NBA Talks audio session recording. Um, as you know, if you've seen some of our other videos before here on our channel, uh, we actually like to do spoofs. My buddy Randy and I like to just get on and just do some stupid stuff just because we think it's funny. And we were doing it for fun before, but what I really enjoyed doing is just talking about basketball. Um, Randy and I really, really love the NBA, and so I decided to, I'm, I'm by myself today, uh, he's not here, but I just decided to make a recording and just kind of give you my first impressions of this 2014-2015 uh, season we're entering into. It starts one week from today, and um, here's the thing, I was born and raised in Northeast Ohio. I even lived in Cleveland for a bit. I grew up uh, right on the border of Ohio and PA, uh, Pennsylvania, and I've always been a Cavs fan. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not like any of the other Cleveland teams because I'm all Pittsburgh all the way, but Pittsburgh doesn't have a basketball team, so I always started watching Cavs when I was real young. And where I grew up and where I went to school at was roughly, I don't know, half an hour away from where LeBron grew up and was born and raised in Akron. And... I always heard about LeBron uh, going through high school and whatnot. You always heard about this dude, you know, a couple of towns over who was just lighting places, you know, just lighting teams up and traveling all around. And you just heard of this guy. And, you know, being a Cavs fan and going to games before he came around, obviously you want the hometown guy to come to your team. And eventually it worked out. You know, the Cavs drafted LeBron. And, you know, let's just skip all that. Let's just get to the good part. When he left Cleveland, I was just mad. I was just mad. See, I have loyalty to Northeast Ohio. I just really love where I was born and raised. There's things about it I don't like. Obviously, I don't like the cold, and there's a few other things. And the thing is, I don't even live there now. I live in North Carolina. I decided I want to live at the beach, so I made that move. And now, looking back, I understand why he left. But I was so mad at the time. I was just angry and... Being a Cavs fan, you watch one of the greatest players ever play the game, you know he's just leaving your team, and you just don't think he's coming back. You know, it, it was that's the thing. Like you heard about this kid for all those years, and you see you see what he was doing. You follow his career, and then he makes it to your team. Like it was real personal. It wasn't just oh we drafted this guy who's real good and he left. You felt like a real connection with him. And that's why it just bummed everybody out, especially myself. But with that being said, I badmouthed him for a long time. And it's just mostly because I don't want to say I felt hurt, but I felt betrayed for my team. Like, I knew we were just terrible, <laughs> you know? But uh, anyway, with that being said, I'm glad LeBron's going back. I'm glad he's back in Cleveland, and I'm really excited about the Kevin Love trade. I'm really excited. And... I, here's the thing. I wish we could have hung on to Andrew Wiggins because I loved that pick. Absolutely loved that pick. I did not want to draft Jabari Parker. Um, I do think Jabari Parker is a good player. He just did not want to play in Cleveland, which I can't say I blame him because it's Cleveland. However, I would have liked to have seen him there, but he didn't want to play there. Andrew Wiggins didn't care where he went. He just wanted to work hard. So I liked that pick. But if it means giving him up to get Kevin Love, I understand that, and I'd rather have Kevin Love. I think, uh, you know, with LeBron going back and with Love coming to town, I think it's going to take a lot of pressure off Kyrie Irving, and he's going to be able to perform the best he has in the last few years because that pressure isn't on him anymore. And to be quite honest, I think they're going to be one of the best teams in the East, and I'm talking like possibly a one or a two seed. I really think the only other team that they can uh, that can give them a hard time would probably be Chicago. I think with Derrick Rose coming back, a healthy Derrick Rose, mind you, and I think with Pau Gasol coming over from L.A. See, when he was in L.A., all they ever did was talk about trading him and getting rid of him, and I can't imagine that's a good, a good, you know, situation to be in. How how are you going to play 100% if you're always hearing that you're going to get traded? I wouldn't want to be that guy. But I think being in Chicago, he's going to be able to open up and be himself, and I think they're going to have a really, really tough team. Not to mention Joakim Noah, who I personally cannot stand. I just don't. I didn't like him when he was at Florida. I don't like him now. I just don't like him. Now, I do respect his game, 
because he is a high energy guy and the dude can play. But I just really don't like him. I just don't like that guy. And he hates Cleveland. So forget you, Joe Keem. No, I'm not a big fan. But anyway, I think um, I think they're going to give him a hard time. I really don't know of any other teams that are just going to give the Cavs a hard time. Let's see. I think Washington's going to be good this year. Um, not because of Paul Pierce. Once again, I just don't like Paul Pierce. He's not my type of dude. However, I think uh, John Wall... Uh, is a great player, and I think he's going to have his Wizards up there, probably in the top five in the Eastern Conference. Um, just trying to think, is Charlotte won't be too bad this season. I think Lance Stevenson's going to be able to uh, run loose and be who he needs to be in order to succeed. He's not going to play second fiddle. I think that's going to be his team when he uh, decides to step up and play. Let's see. Indiana... I don't know, man. They were a train wreck at the end of the year last season, and I just don't know what they're going to do this year. I don't think – I just don't think they're going to be up there. Um, let's see. Detroit, no. Milwaukee, no. See, I'm not just seeing any other teams that are going to really give Cleveland a hard time. I just think it's going to come back to Chicago, and that's just a good team. However, I'd, I would like to see maybe like Chicago and Cleveland make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. That would be sweet. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see. And I think what I'm going to do is probably make a few more recordings. Obviously, this one's about my Cavaliers, and I'll probably talk about them throughout the season. But I think I'm probably going to give some more thoughts and more ideas. I've been wanting to do a recording about how I think the NBA lottery should go down and just a few other things I've been wanting to talk about. So if anybody has any ideas for some recordings or anybody wants to get a dialogue going back and forth, feel free to leave a comment down below. And um, Or if you want to hear me talk about a specific subject, go ahead and just leave me an idea. And like I said, I'll just try to keep some updates and keep my thoughts going over the season as the season rolls on. And I appreciate the time of y'all listening to uh, my recording, and I hope that you come back for more. Thanks, guys. Bye.